Hello and welcome to a measurement video on the circumference of a circle. First of all we'll check out the parts of a circle. We have the diameter. The diameter is the distance across a circle passing through the center. So there's a circle, there's a center and we have an interval that uh, passes across the circle and goes through the center to the other side and that's called our diameter. A radius is the distance from the center of the circle, just the center of the circle, to the edge of the circle. So that's going to be half of the distance of a diameter. A chord is an interval joining any two points on the edge of a circle. It doesn't have to pass through the center, just any two points on the edge of a circle. So there's your chord there. It passes through this point on the edge of the circle and this point on the edge of the circle. So that's called a chord. We have a tangent. It's a line this time touching the edge of a circle at only one point. So it goes up to the circle and just touches it at one point on the circle and we call that line a tangent. We have a segment and that's a part of a circle created when a chord goes across a circle. So we have a chord here and that creates a segment section. Technically that's a minor segment that I've got here shaded and there's another major segment here. It's The chord actually cuts the circle into two segments but uh, we'll call that one a segment, that uh, smaller section there. The circumference of a circle is the distance around the edge. So if we started uh, where the red marking is there and went in the direction of the arrows and went all the way around the circle back to our starting point that distance is called the circumference of the circle. And an arc is just one little section of that circumference. So that section there that I've marked in red there is part of the circumference. We'd call that red bit an arc. We have a sector. It's an area of a circle formed by two radii and that's just the plural of the word radius. So two radiuses and an arc and that forms a sector. I'll show you how. We've got one radius there and another radius there and we've got the arc that goes around. We just got through saying that the, a section of the circumference is an arc. So the arc's in blue there. And so that forms a, a little section of the, um, of the circle known as a sector. So the main part of the video here, finding the circumference of a circle. The circumference can be found using one of the following two formulas. We've got a formula that has the circumference equaling 2 times pi, and I'll tell you about pi in a moment, times the radius, and we kind of summarize that by saying c for circumference equals 2 pi r. So in between things uh, that are beside each other is a, an invisible multiply sign. So we'll remember that there's multiplication between the 2, the pi, and the r, and that r stands for radius in this case. So 2 times pi times whatever the radius is will give us the circumference of the circle. Now if we have a diameter instead of a radius given to us, we'll more than likely choose to use this second version. Circumference equals pi times whatever the diameter is. And we'll shorten that by saying circumference equals pi d or pi times d. So circumference equals pi times the diameter. So usually if we're given a radius, we'll use the first version with the r in it. Or if we're given the diameter in the question, we'll choose to use that second version. And there's a pi in that first version, 2 times pi times r. And there's a pi in that second section, pi times d. So we'll need to uh, have a think about, uh, find out about pi. Pi is a very special number. It's, uh, it's very special to circles particularly. It helps us work out a lot of things to do with circles. Uh, pi represents technically the number of times the diameter of a circle goes around the circumference of that circle. And it works for any circle. At the number of times the diameter goes around the circumference is the same number in, in either very small circles and very big circles as well. 
Now we usually get that pi number to use in our calculations from our calculator button and pi goes on forever. It's a it's one it's called an irrational number and it's a it's a continuous decimal that doesn't stop and doesn't have any patterns to it either. Strange sort of a number but very useful for circles. So we usually get it from our calculator button but in some questions we're actually told what to use, what form of pi to use. Sometimes we use a rounded off version of 3.14 which is a shortened version of pi or 22 over 7, an improper fraction of 22 over 7 is also very close to the decimal that we have on our calculator. So every now and again they'll tell us what we should use for pi. So here's an example. Find the circumference here of this circle and it's got a radius of 6. Remember the radius goes from the centre to the edge, so 6 centimetres is our radius. So we might choose to use the radius version of the circumference uh, formula here. C equals 2 pi r. Now we, rem we remember that in between the 2 and the pi and the pi and the r there's a multiply sign as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the circumference equals 2 times pi times 6. Now why have we put a 6 there? Well we said that 6 is our radius up here. That's our radius and so that 6 goes in the spot where the radius needs to go. And on our calculator we have a calculation that says that our circumference in this particular circle is 37.7 centimeters. I've rounded that off to one decimal place. So we had a circle with a radius of 6 centimeters and that created a circumference, a distance around the edge of the circle of 37.7 centimeters there. Okay, now in this next circle we're given a diameter. A diameter, remember, goes uh, from one side of the circle to the other passing through the center. So we've got a diameter of 20 meters this time and thankfully we have a circumference uh, version of the formula with a D in it, D for diameter. So what we do here is we take the circumference, it equals pi times whatever the diameter is. Now 20 was our diameter, so that's our diameter, and we're putting it kind of in the, uh, in the spot where the d is and uh, calculating from there. So pi times 20 on our calculator, there's a pi button on our calculator, that'll give us a circumference of 62.83 meters rounded off to two decimal places. When the question doesn't tell us how to round it off we're allowed to choose and we just tell the marker how much we've rounded it off. So we just do pi button on our calculator times 20 and then press equals. And that's the distance around this circle, a lot bigger circle, obviously 20 meters across, so it's a very big circle. Uh, and then we have our two circumference um, formulas there, two examples. One of them we use the radius because we were given a radius. Uh, so this first one we were given a radius, so we use the radius version of the circumference formula. In this second one we were given a diameter, so we use the diameter version. And that's a pretty uh, logical thing to do. So sometimes we're asked, as I said before, to use a particular version of pi in our calculations and not just take what the calculator gives us. So in this question we're asked to find the circumference of a circle below using pi as 22 over 7. So where it says pi, instead of pressing the calculator button, we'll type in 22 over 7 for that bit instead. So because it's given us a diameter in this question, I'm going to choose to use the diameter version of the circumference formula. Remember we have a radius version and a diameter version. So we have circumference equals pi times d. And we have a diameter from our question, you'll see, of 10 meters. So that'll go where the d is. Now for pi though, they've told us to, to use a particular version of 22 over 7. So I'm going to take that 22 over 7 and multiply it by 10 which is my diameter. So really I've put the 22 over 7 in there instead of pi and I've taken the 10 which is our diameter and put it in there instead of the d and multiplied those two things together. That's all I've done. So if I'm leaving it as an improper fraction I'll get 220 over 7 
but probably it's logical to divide that bottom 7 into the 220 or press that S to D button on our calculator and get a final answer of 31 and 3 sevenths. Because we've used a fraction version of pi because the question asked us to, uh, we'll try and leave our answer as a fraction if we can. So one thing's interesting, I've just got through saying that uh, if you've been given a radius usually you uh, use the radius version of the formula and if you're given a diameter you'll, you'll more than likely choose to use the diameter section of the formula but we do have a bit of flexibility, let me see, let me show you here. So if you've got this uh, here, this, this uh, circle with a radius of 6 centimeters we will certainly we could put that 6 straight into that uh, radius version of the circumference formula no problem there. We also if we like using the diameter formula every time we could turn that radius of 6 into a diameter of 12 because remember the radius is half of what the diameter would be if this line up here went all the way across after heading through the center it would have 6 on the right hand side and 6 on the left hand side. Can you see that the diameter for that circle would be 12? And if we did uh, double that radius to get a diameter of 12, we could then choose to use the diameter version of the circumference formula if we liked using that one better. Some students remember that pi d version of the circumference formula more easily than the 2 pi r version. It's up to you really. Now if we were given a diameter of 20, we would more than likely choose to use that diameter version. But of course, how do we get from a diameter to a radius? A radius, if I could draw a straight line, a radius would be half of what the diameter would be for that question. It only goes from the center to the edge, not from one side all the way through the center to the other. So we could divide that diameter in two and get 10 for the radius and then choose to use our 2 pi r formula if that was our favorite. So if you like you can choose a favorite and just adjust each of the questions. If you do remember both form, forms of the uh, equation though, they're both formulas, we can then uh, be a bit more flexible about which one we use and it's a bit quicker. We don't have to adjust if we stick to the radius version for radiuses and the diameter version for diameters. Alright, let's summarize now. We've had a look at the parts of a circle first. Many of these questions about circumference talk about parts of a circle, so we'd better know our way around circles. The diameter we talked about. We need to know about a radius, a chord, a tangent, a segment, an arc, a sector, and a circumference. So you need to know the meanings of all those and maybe know how to draw a quick diagram. We also learnt about pi because that pi was in both versions of our circumference formulas for finding the circumference of a circle. It's a very special number used in circle work. Usually we just get it from pressing our calculator button, uh, but sometimes we're asked to shorten it to 3.14 or 22 over 7 and every now and again the questioner will tell us uh, which version to use. And also, to find the circumference of a formula, we had a radius version, circumference equals 2 pi r, where we put the radius number in. Or, if we're given a diameter, we might choose to use the diameter version of the circumference formula, where we just take pi and multiply it by whatever the diameter is for that particular circle. Hope that helps. All about circles and the parts of circles. We're talking about pi there, and we learned how to calculate the circumference of a circle when we're given a radius and also to calculate the circumference of a circle when we've been given a diameter. So I hope those skills help you in your work and I'll catch you next time for some more uh, circle and uh, geometry and measurement type uh, work and of course any for any of your maths needs if you're stuck on anything or you'd just like to make sure you know things and check your understanding go to peterblakemaths.com and you'll see lots of great videos there. Thanks for your time and catch you next time. Bye-bye.